we started working with Japan um, in 2010. So, <laughs> and for us, Japan is really this fantastic, incredible country because everything you see is extraordinary. And, and especially as a designer, when you have a keen eye for forms and how people use things. And, and, and so we love going there. We go almost every year now. And it's, um, we are working with this company called Karimoku. And they have a spin-off brand, which is Karimoku New Standard. Karimoku is the biggest producer of wooden furniture in Japan. And they want to, they understand that they have to renew themselves and, and uh, be, work with young designers and also designers from abroad. Um, so they asked us to, to come up with ideas to, to design furniture with using small sections of wood because in Japan, most of the trees come from forests and they're not controlled um, uh, forestry. So it's, the, the trees are not growing very straight and you can only get small sections of wood, which is good. The rest you have to, um, most of the wood is actually transformed into paper. So it's not very valuable for the trees. And, and they wanted to change that and work with these old trees and make something good out of it, something really valuable. And they have this saying, I remember it was a bit of a pressure for us, they said, something made with a tree has to last as long as the life of the tree. So, so wow, you know, <laughs> really, wow. <laughs> and, um, and so we started very little. I, I remember we made, the first piece that we made was a, was, um, was a stool. Uh, I think we can, we can see it here. So just, um, um, just without the backrest, just a, just a little stool that you could stack. And, um, and it worked quite well and we're happy. So the, the next year we said, okay, let's make a chair based on the stool. And, um, and I remember for the chair, we, we, we struggled a little because we, we wanted, we, this time, we really wanted it to be very, very comfortable. And, um, and that was a bit of a challenge. So we went into a Swiss cafe where people hang out and drink wine and stay there for really long. And we thought maybe there has to be something there that is, is really nice. And, um, and in the end, we took the measures from the Swiss cafe chairs, the ones that you find everywhere, the organ glass, classic, the old one. And, um, and we took the same radius, the same angle, the same angle for here. And we just designed something that was really as close as possible to that ergonomy. And um, plus something that the, the Swiss cafe chair doesn't have, this one you can stack it. So you can, if you have a restaurant or if you have it in your home, you can stack more than I think up to five chairs um, together. And, um, and based on this, the year after, we came up with this one, which is a, a sort of, um, it's, it's in between, it's like a, a low chair, but it's, it's not very common to have low chairs that don't have cushions. So it's just with the wood, but it had to be very comfortable. And also, I think you can see if you can come close to the models that each pieces are made from very small sections of wood which are glued together. So it's not, they try to waste as little wood as possible. So they don't take a big chunk of, of wood and cut from it. They just combine all these small sections to make it. Even the feet is two uh, half cylinder for one feet. It's two half cylinder. You can see the detail if you want. It's, it's a little bit like a, a, the car industry because at some point you have people doing this, so it looks very easy, but she's working really fast to, to make a piece in wood that will end up looking very organic. So it, she has a great skill to work very fast. And at the same time, we never saw this in her furniture factory. They have a robot which is doing more or less the same job, but uh, in a very controlled way. And um, I mean, in Europe, it's very rare that you see this for a wood, man, a wood furniture manufacturer that they can actually have a robot to just sand down pieces of wood. So, um, so we constantly learn from them. We make a mock-up, which is not as 
finished as this. It's just cardboard and pieces of wood, so we, we know as far as we can go. Then we make a very nice 3D model and we send it to them. It's a little bit like a surprise because they receive the 3D model, like, you know, a Lego box or something, and then they build it. And then, ah, is it comfortable? <laughs> it's a little bit of a surprise every time. I remember when we sent them the plans for this, they were, they were telling us that they were surprised in the end that it was comfortable because it didn't look comfortable to them. This, this one, the stool, so the stool is, you don't have this part at the back, so it's, there's no plywood. It's only uh, massive wood. And then for the chair, we asked for a little bit of plywood, so the backrest is in plywood. When you make plywood, you have to have a mold, so it's more expensive. And then this worked, so we said, okay, more plywood. And then here, the, the front and the back are in plywood. And, um, and actually, this is not the final, final. The, the, the last one in production will have, the backrest will have also, it's bent like this, but it will also have a little bend like that, so you don't feel it at the top of the, of the back. So three-dimensional plywood. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so we call it castor, uh, because in French, castor means beaver, which is the animal that eats wood. And the reason is because all these details that are cut, they remind us a little bit of like, the way that uh, when, when these animals eat the wood, then it leaves sort of curves in the in things. In in a cartoon. Yeah, more in the cartoon. In reality, it's, it's not that it's not nice, but uh, in the cartoons, it's always like and, um, and since everybody loves animals, especially Japanese people. <laughs> so they really love the idea when we... And, um, and now the, the family of Castor is expanding because we're working on a sofa to go along. There are also tables and shelves. So you can have everything. Yeah, it becomes a very bourgeois uh, family of castor, <laughs> with a sofa and everything, and yeah. Rich castors. Yeah, very rich. <laughs> but they walk a lot, and, you know. But I think this is a perfect transition. So this, so also you discover a lot of crazy things in Japan. So for, we're always amazed. What is that object for? What is that? And this is the CEO of the Karimoku New Standard Company. And we were amazed by this object. What is it? And he told us this is a traditional Japanese tray made to carry tools. We like this idea so much of having this vertical handle like this. So we, we took again this same idea of okamochi, and we combined it with um, with the, this a little bit the um, the reference of these toolboxes that we have seen in in the beginning. And um, yeah, I think it's pretty plain here. It's it's. Um, the box is in plastic, so it's it's um, industrial material, which we we think is um, at the at the best. Also, as a designer, if you if you get to work and make a piece in plastic, it's like a recognition because it means that you have a company that is willing to invest money into your ideas and make a mold, an expensive mold, and make a large production of your object. So for us, it's always we're always a bit moved when we see an object that's in plastic and put into production, that's, um, that's uh, yeah, it's like real things. And for this, we, we wanted to add an extra touch, which was a reminder a little bit of this world of tools and, and also of this handle, like the one that you've seen. So, we, so the, um, this wooden part is just clipped in to the plastic. We can't show you here because it's... Uh, but we are proud about the, this detail because uh, it's no glue, no other pieces. It's only the elasticity of the plastic make it uh, functional, finally. Clack. And the sound is, uh, <laughs> from my side, is uh, fantastic. <laughs> oh, it's finished. Okay. Um, and yes, just, and um, you all know the, the famous uh, Meva box. Uh, we discover very late because it's uh, French and Belgian, but uh, we know the object uh, is beautiful. And uh, you directly see the reference uh, of the f about the form. Uh, looks also like a little house, something like this. Uh, that speak to, speak to everybody, uh, little house or small box like this. And it's also 
the famous matter of a cartoon. We love that the, the idea that people on this see qu quickly. Uh, okay, maybe could be in my surrounding or not. And uh, and yes. And finally, it's a it's a product for Alberto Alessi, but uh, he asked for Swiss, but it's bit it's between Swiss and Japanese uh, design. Finally, inside. And yes. Plastic is probably the, um, the most affordable, you know, um, thing that you, material that you can buy. Usually when you go to a supermarket and you have a product in plastic and another one in wood or, or metal, the plastic one is like the cheap one. But it's also the one that people buy more. And, and at one point I remember that we talked about it and we, we really agreed on the fact that the reason why we started to study product design when we were young was to, because we wanted to make objects that anybody can buy. It's not, we're not so interested, I mean, it's something that we do also a bit as research, but we're not so interested in, in luxury or very um, um, uh, design that's only for the happy few. We think the beauty of design is really that everybody understands and everybody can sort of buy it if he needs it. And um, so that's why it's more valuable for in our like own range of uh, values, probably. Yeah. And also, uh, you speak about aluminium, but uh, Alessi doesn't work so much with aluminium. It's uh, the core business of uh, Alessi is uh, stainless steel. And uh, for during the discussion with the product developer at Alessi, sometimes they, 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 they try to convince us to go with a production in stainless steel, but for her stainless steel is more, is more luxury and is the reason to go into the same direction. It's, it was better to go into the plastic because the price, because the sound of the object on the table, because uh, the colors, because uh, the price. Yeah. It's fitting to this group here, democratic design. It's the only group with plastic objects. Uh, especially from Micro, and I remember you told me you would like to design one time something for, for Micro. Yes. And yeah. I think it could be great to buy a uh, Swiss design uh, yeah. in the supermarket. Yep. Is the guy from Micro here today? <laughs> we, of course we invited him, okay. but he didn't have time. So. <laughs> but we recorded it now. Okay. It's filmed okay. and we we'll send it to him. No, but there's, I mean, uh, it's always we. It's like a running story with us. But it's you're gonna buy a toothbrush, and then you have this vast offer of different toothbrushes, and they're all like little signs, and they all have the, their features. But you don't need to be a designer. You're just you just have to buy a toothbrush, and you have to look at all of them and sort of imagine. And then also, a toothbrush has to go into your mouth and into your hand. So there's a lot of problematics that are interesting in such objects. And that's typically where we like to, you know, challenge things and, and, and try to do something. There, you also exhibited our watch uh, there. Also Thank you. Democratic. Yeah, it's it's not expensive. It's, not expensive. Um, it's for a French company. Yeah, it's for a French company. So a studio based in Switzerland. We wanted to make a watch, and our first watch was for a French company, made in China with a Japanese movement. So it's, it's not. <laughs> Um, but for this, we were inspired by um, the military watches that, that are very readable. So if you look at more at the, um, the dial, it's, it's, uh, it has a high contrast. So it's always a color with the white, and the typeface is also quite strong. So it's, it's really a watch where you can clearly see the time. And also, what we liked about these type of military watches is that um, they have a, uh, a strap which is in, in the fabric and um, it's very functional and at the same time it's, um, it looks a little bit dressy to have a, a, a strap in, in fabric. So, so um, we wanted to explore that. Also the, the box is in aluminum which is very strong but at the same time very light. And, um, that's something, you know, sometimes watches are made to be heavy just with like weight just to sort of like feel like heavy.
but here it's 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 strong and light. So it's something for every day. That was really our, our idea. And we called it Scout because it's the spirit of um, you know something that you can use every day or in, in different conditions. We did it for a company called uh, Hey, based in Denmark. Maybe you know. And um, we love in the reference. We love. Uh, we love the shakers. Uh, you know, in USA, the people very functionalist, and they they have a reel, and they hang everything like the chairs and everything, and we we want to design a reel, very basic, as usual. We keep a reference. The reference is the I beam, the I beam, and you slide the hooks on it, easy, and uh, that makes a product finally. And uh, yeah, we also love, archi love architecture. It's the reason why the beam, when you see the a construction, a metallic construction with the beam, when you look in the city, uh, for us it's beautiful. And these colors, talking about colors, is the, it's a bit commercial, but it's also a reference to the uh, comment dit anti rouille the the, col the the real color of the the beam. Um, it's this color. It's a, a special paint on the iron to 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 protect to the rust, something like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, but finally, it's also a beautiful color for us that fits well in interiors. We just had our anniversary of the 10th year of the studio in Lausanne, and we made a, something called Big Game Small Shop, and we sold our products to the people. And it was so good to be actually able to, you know, have someone just wanting a coat rack for his house and, and buy this one and be happy with it. And I think that's the cool thing about being a designer. Thank you. Thank you.